Welcome to another edition of the Morning Devotional. My name is Pastor William Hill, the pastor of Providence Presbyterian Church located in Evansville, Indiana. If you'd like to find out more information about the church, you can visit our website. That information will be available to you at the conclusion of this, um, of this devotional. Today is Thursday, December 7th, 2023. This is edition number two of season nine as we are continuing this journey through the book of Deuteronomy. We're in chapter two uh, today. Let's pray first and then we'll consider uh, this chapter as Moses continues uh, a retelling of the history of the people of old that have come out of Egypt and are on the brink of entering into the promised land. And we'll glean from this chapter some uh, practical things that I trust will help you in your Christian walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. But let's pray first. Our Father in heaven, as we come to you again and we come to consider this portion of your word, and there's so much here that we're really not going to deal with, but Father, help us to see the things that we should see, and may we glean from this chapter uh, very important things that will help us as we walk with you to our heavenly rest. May you grant us your grace, your spirit, may you forgive us for our sins, and may you help us now to understand your word, we pray for Christ's sake. Amen. Well, Deuteronomy chapter 2 continues, as I've already mentioned, continues that events uh, and uh, retelling of the history of Israel began in chapter 1. Let me read just the first 15 verses of Deuteronomy chapter 2, although I will take up the entirety of this chapter. Uh, Deuteronomy 2, beginning with verse 1, Then we turned and journeyed into the wilderness in the direction of the Red Sea, as the Lord told me. And for many days we traveled around Mount Seir. Then the Lord said to me, You have been traveling around this mountain country long enough. Turn northward and command the people. You are about to pass through the territory of your brothers, the people of Esau, who live in Seir, and they will be afraid of you. So be very careful. Do not contend with them, for I will not give you any of their land. No, not so much as for the sole of of the foot to tread on, because I have given Mount Seir to Esau as a possession." You shall purchase food from them for money that you may eat, and you shall also buy water of them for money that you may drink. For the Lord your God has blessed you in all the work of your hands. He knows you're going through this great wilderness. These 40 years the Lord your God has been with you. You have lacked nothing. So we went on away from our brothers, the people of Esau who live in Seir, away from the Arabah Arabah road from Elath and Ezon Geber. And we turned and went in the direction of the wilderness of Moab. And the Lord said to me, Do not harass Moab or contend with them in battle, for I will not give you any of their land for a possession, because I have given heir to the people of Lot for a possession. The Amim formerly lived there, a people great and many and tall, as the Anakim. Like the Anakim, they are also counted as Rephium, but the Moabites called them Emim. The Horites also lived in Seir formerly, but the people of Esau dispossessed them and destroyed them from before them and settled in their place, as Israel did to the land of their possession, which the Lord gave to them. Now rise up and go over the brook Zered. So we went over the brook Zered. At the time from our leaving Kadesh Barnea until we crossed the brook Zered was 38 years until the entire generation, that is, the men of war, had perished from the camp as the Lord had sworn to them. For indeed the hand of the Lord was against them to destroy them from the camp until they had perished. Well, in this chapter, you can easily break this chapter into two uh, parts. First, you have the wilderness years. You might note that from your, if you have an ESV Bible, it's the heading of this section. It really runs all the way through verse 25, the wilderness years. And there's some things here that I want to point out of importance in this section. And then we have, again, noting the heading of the ESV study Bible, the first conquest or the defeat of King uh, Sion. Now, in this first section from verses 1 uh, through uh, 25, we have a number of things to point out, I think, that will, uh, should help us. First, uh, we note the two, pro- two prohibitions that were given to the people of Israel. Do not try to take the land that is there in Seir, for that is the land that was given to Esau as a possession. Now, it's important to remember that Esau was a bitter enemy of the people of God. This is the elder brother of Jacob, 
And Esau is the father of Edom, which became a very bitter rival of the people of Israel. And then we note also this other land, the wilderness of the Moab. And there, again, the people of Israel were prevented from taking that land as well. They were commanded, in fact, not to. Now, why is this important? Well, it's important because, remember, Moses is talking to the second generation of the people of Israel. This is not their land, and this is not going to be their land. Their land awaits them across the Jordan. That land, uh, what we know as the promised land or the, the land of Canaan, the land flowing with milk and honey, that is, of course, a picture for you and me in that God has promised to bring you and me to, uh, to our heavenly rest, the new heavens and the new earth. But what is important to note, even in these two prohibitions given to us in the first 15 verses, we note that God, though prevented them from taking these lands, he did use these, these, um, these people, uh, these enemies of, uh, of God's people, to supply and provide for every need that they have. Note there in verse 6, you shall purchase food for them for money that you may eat, and you shall also buy water of them for money that you may drink. Now, God gives this to them uh, to provide for them the needs that they indeed have. Now, this is something that we see uh, um, articulated in the New Testament as well, that our God will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. The God of heaven has promised to give to us our daily bread. He has promised to feed us. He has promised to take care of us, those things that we stand in need of each and every day. And certainly it can be argued, I think, quite quite uh, quite well that food and drink is a necessity of existence. And so, again, the land that they were prohibited from taking, this is not going to be their land. Their land awaits them across the Jordan. Um, but God still uses the wicked of the world to help and provide for the people of God. In some sense, this is plundering uh, the pagans of the, of the land in, su in such a way that God's people are cared for. The second section of the book of this chapter is the defeat of King Sion. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time here, only to note just a couple of things that of importance. If you back up to verse 25, you read there, This day I will begin to put the dread and fear of you on the peoples who are under the whole heaven, who shall hear the report of you and shall tremble and be in anguish because of you. Now, of course, they, the peoples of the earth are in anguish. They are in fear of the people of God because God fights for them. This is a theme that will show up very early pages in the book of Joshua when, when the spies are sent into Jericho and Rahab the prostitute has heard reports of the people of God and how God fights for them. And so this is a theme that is being established and will, uh, will continually come forward as we move into the promised land in the book of of Joshua. But what is important to note, not only in verse 25, but also in verse 36, that you see from Aor, which is on the edge of the valley of the Arnon, and from the city that is in the valley, as far as Gilead, there was not a city too high for us. The Lord our God gave all into our hands. And so again, we know how God fought for his people. And brothers and sisters, that's what he does for us today. This is not any different now than it was then. Uh, the God of heaven will fight for the redeemed of the Lord. Those whom he's placed his eternal love upon, he will battle the forces of evil. He will battle the world, the flesh, and the devil. He will go before us, and he will pursue, and he will gain the victory for us. And it's important, of course, that we trust him. And we must trust him. Because as noted in this chapter, if you look at the end of um, in verse 14, at the time from our leaving Kadesh Barnea until we crossed the brook Zerad was 38 years, until the entire generation, that is the men of war, had perished from the camp as the Lord had sworn to them. Now this goes back to Numbers 13 and 14. And the spies had gone into the land and they had come back in disbelief of that which God said he would do for them. And God judged the people and said that they would perish in the wilderness and they would not cross into the promised land. They perished because of unbelief. And we, as those who have been brought to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we must trust in the Lord with all of our heart and lean not on our own understanding and all of our ways acknowledge Him. He will direct our paths. And so, just some practical note and items from chapter 2. Again, I leave a, I'm leaving a lot of things out in, 
in these devotionals, but just enough information that I trust helps us think through some of these matters and place our hope and trust in the God who does fight for us, a God who has promised us our heavenly rest in the new heavens and the new earth, and the God who calls upon us to trust Him in all things. He will provide for everything that we need. Well, I trust these times are helpful for you. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave me a note. The way to reach me is there before you on the screen. And so until the Friday edition, when we consider Deuteronomy chapter 3, may the Lord bless you today, and may you walk according to His will. God bless.